What's up boys, if you're watching this video that means that I managed to put it out before I went on vacation. And if you're not watching this video then you can't hear me right now. Dude I'm so fucking funny. Anyway, the first episode of House of the Dragon released today and up to its release there's been a lot of discussion around the series. A lot of people don't want to watch it because they feel like it's gonna be a train wreck just like the last four seasons of Game of Thrones were. There are a lot of people that refuse to watch anything in the universe of A Song of Ice and Fire until the next book comes out. They're kind of like boycotting it, which all power to them, I guess. Have fun boycotting the series until 2025. <laughs> or just whenever the fuck the book comes out. And then there are the people who are interested in watching the show. Now, what is my opinion? on House of the Dragon episode 1. I'm sure all of you have been waiting for my opinion on the series and you haven't watched it yet. You need to know what I think. And I think that it's absolutely shit. It's basically the exact same garbage from the last two or three seasons of Game of Thrones. No, I'm kidding. It's great. I really don't understand how people thought that this show was going to be on the same level as the last four seasons of Game of Thrones because the people who fucking ruined Game of Thrones don't work on this show they don't write for it so i don't i really don't get it although to be fair it's too early obviously to tell if this show is going to be amazing based off of one episode but this one episode was pretty good it did a very good job of introducing at least a lot of the main players in the upcoming targaryen civil war and it also did a very good job of explaining the succession crisis that is about to happen the pacing of this episode was really good, especially when you consider the amount of information it had to give to the audience. During the episode, I never felt like the show was just unloading exposition onto me. Most of the important information was either shown or given through very clever dialogue. I only felt that one scene dragged on a bit too long, which is the scene with the where the King Viserys is talking to his wife in the bathtub and they talk about like how it difficult it has been to create a male heir and how they've had like miscarriages and all that and probably the only reason why i thought that this scene dragged on too long is because i've read the books and i've watched lore videos and i knew all this information already but most of the people who are gonna watch this show probably haven't read the books or watched the youtube videos so obviously for them a scene like this is quite important. There are also some dialogue exchanges that uh, foreshadow future events, which I really like. Uh, I'm not gonna give any examples really because I don't wanna spoil too much of the show for the people who haven't seen it yet, because I really recommend that you watch this episode yourself. The dragons. The dragons are very cool and very cute and I want one. Uh, I like how they're all different and not in, like in Game of Thrones where they're all the same but different colors. Now even though I like the episode and most things about it, there are certain things that I didn't like as much, like for example, the violence and the sex. Now I don't have a problem with violence and sex, but this show being a prequel to Game of Thrones, I think the creators felt like they had to put in violence and sex, because that's what Game of Thrones was very much known for. But the way they put it in kind of feels like they didn't really want to. Like very often when violence and sex happens, there are, are in these scenes where the camera only like focuses on a, a specific part of like the violence or the sex for like a second before cutting away to like a very, you know like how in 90s movies and shit, the fight scenes are very blurry and you can't really see what's happening. It's kind of like that. I mean, there are a couple exceptions, like during this one scene, a guy is getting his uh, cock chopped off and obviously you can't completely see it, which I understand that part. And that's the only thing in the scene that really gets focused on for longer than a second because the rest of the scene, uh, which is also very gruesome, I guess, and very violent, it, it looks like a 90s action movie. You can't really see anything that's going on. And this is very weird to me because in Game of Thrones, the sex and violence very much felt like it was just a part of the world and it felt kind of normal because they didn't, they didn't make it blurry. And and you could, you know, very much tell what was happening in the scenes because when Ned Stark, for example, chops off the head of the Night's Watchman, it's the camera kind of lingers and it doesn't like cut away or anything. And in this show, it very much cuts away from the violence or kind of shows it in like the corners of the screen, but it never really focuses on it, which makes it feel odd. It makes it feel like it isn't part of the world completely. Also, just to be a bit clearer, 
I'm not talking about like the jousting scene, for example. The jousting scene was fucking amazing. When I say violence, I'm talking about like people murdering each other and cutting each other's hands off and shit. Also, the throne looks pretty weird. I've heard a lot of people say oh, it was a compromise between the throne from a Game of Thrones and the throne from the books. But like, why are all the swords on the ground? Because like, the, th the throne was built before the Red Keep existed. So when they put the throne in the throne room, did they have to move the throne separately from like the ground piece? And why even make the ground piece in the first place? It's, it's really weird, I don't get it, I don't, I don't really like the throne. Then there is the fact that a lot of the characters don't really look the way they're supposed to. And no, I'm not talking about Corlys Valerian, although we get to him in a little bit. Uh, the Valerians in general still don't have purple eyes. And I don't know how difficult it is to give characters purple eyes in television shows, but all I'm saying, Yennefer in The Witcher has purple eyes, okay? Now, I am going to do a separate video about how I think that in fantasy, representation is very often handled poorly. But I do want to talk about it very quickly. Yes, for those of you with keen eyes, Corlys Flareon is indeed played by a black actor. Now, I really don't care, while watching the show, it really doesn't influence the quality of it at all. It's just I find this to be very poor representation, because basically the character of Corlys Valerian in the books is, let's be honest, a white guy who grew up in like a medieval English culture. And the character on screen is the exact same, except he's played by a black actor. And I'm not sure if this is the best way to represent black people and black culture on screen when the guy is basically just the exact same white guy he is in the source material. Especially seeing as there are cultures and countries within the world of Ice and Fire that are based off African cultures that they could have, you know, created new characters from to properly represent black culture on screen. Now personally, I find taking an already existing character and changing their race, but besides that, change nothing else about them, instead of creating an entirely new character from the ground up, the most lazy form of representation there is. Now obviously I'm not black, so I don't know how black people feel about something like this, so ple uh, please feel free to you know, tell me I'm wrong in the comments, uh, but I just personally feel it would also be a lot cooler story-wise to introduce African cultures instead of just injecting black people into a Western culture, because we don't really get a lot of African medieval culture in movies and television. Uh, it's very much so just medieval English or medieval French culture that dominate fantasy or just dominate medieval television shows and movies in general, it would be more interesting to actually see African culture for once. Anyway, let's move away from this somewhat controversial topic, uh, but I do want it to be made clear. Him being black, I don't really care. It doesn't take away any of the enjoyment I had watching the first episode or how much I will like the character because even though he wasn't on screen a lot in the first episode, I do really like his character already. It's just I think that the representation in this show could have been handled a lot better. Yeah, and with that, I think the only other thing I really wanted to comment on this video that I kind of forgot to do in the beginning when I was talking about all the things I loved about it is that King's Landing under the Targaryen rule also feels a lot different than it did in uh, the Game of Thrones where it was of course under the rule of uh, the Baratheons. And I really like that difference, they have dragon statues in the city, they have that, uh, I, I believe it's called a dragon dome, I, I, I forget, but it looks really cool. I also like the fact that when dragons fly over the city, the citizens don't really pay any attention to it because they've they've gotten used to constantly seeing dragons and I really like that. But yeah, I think those are my initial thoughts of How is the Dragon. Uh, if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, you know, I'll see you all in a week when I come back from my vacation. Goodbye.